learners and welcome to grade 9 civic education lesson. My name is Munsanje Mwaka. Today's topic is on national budgets. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define national budgets, state parts of the national budget, explain importance of budgeting for the country. Now, we can go to the main discussion of the lesson. Learners, I'm sure you still remember what we did last time on budget. We did personal budget, family budget, and national budget. And I gave you homework to go and find out the meaning of national budget. Can we have the answers now? Very good. Now, come with me and let us look at the meaning of national budget. The national budget. A national budget is a plan made by the government on how to raise and spend money. A national budget, it is a national plan. This plan is prepared by the government. They are going to plan on how they are going to raise money for the whole nation. And they are going to plan how they are going to spend this money. When a national budget is prepared, who are the beneficiaries of this national budget? It is as citizens. So when a national budget is prepared, it is prepared so that every member in the nation, every citizen in the nation is able to enjoy. So you find that this national budget, it is a plan which is very difficult to, 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 to state. It is a plan which takes a lot of time for it to come out in a good way and to benefit every citizen in the country. When you look at a national budget, you discover that this national budget is made up of three things. There's what we call revenue and recurrent expenditure and capital expenditure. When you look at these three parts that makes up a national budget, we're going to discuss these three parts one by one. Now, before we look at these three main parts of a national budget, you discover that this same national budget, it is made up of two parts, which is income and expenditure. That income, which we looked at last time under personal budget and family budget, in a national budget, we don't usually say income, but they use a term which is called revenue. So in a national budget, we are going to concentrate more on a term which is revenue. When I say revenue, we are simply uh, referring to the same term which we did last time under personal budget and family budget, the term which is called income. So don't get confused when we say revenue. It is just the same as the income which we did last time. So where does the government get the money which they use to prepare a national budget? What do you think, learners? Because for them to prepare this big budget for everyone in Zambia, where do they get the revenue? the money, the same income. Where do they get it? Very good. They get this revenue from different sources. Now, let's look at this term which is called revenue. Revenue is the government income which is raised through tax. So when we say Revenue is the government income. We mean that the money that the government uses to prepare a national budget, they receive it through various ways, like tax. Now, what is the tax? You may wonder, tax, tax, what is this tax? So we are saying tax is the money collected from people and companies. So 
The money that the government collects from people and the companies, that becomes the source of revenue for the national budget. Or it becomes the source of income for the national budget. So from here, we look at who is responsible in collecting this tax from people and the companies in Zambia. I'm sure, Chanda, you can try. I can even give you a very big master. Good. The revenue of the country, it is collected by what we call Zambia Revenue Authority or ZRA. But I can't encourage you to be saying ZRA. You should always say tax is collected from people and companies by Zambia Revenue Authority. Is it clear? Very good. So when you look at Zambia Revenue Authority, it is the government department that collects tax from companies and individuals. So when the government collects this tax from companies and individuals, this now becomes the source of income for the nation then they will now plan how they are going to use that money. So that tax that is collected becomes the source of revenue for the nation. When this money has been collected, the national budget is now supposed to be prepared. When this national budget is prepared, what happens here? you are going to find the ministries in Zambia. There are different ministries in Zambia. We have the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health, but we have a specific ministry which is called the Ministry of Finance. This ministry is in charge of national budgeting in Zambia. So what happens here? A group of people who come together under public accounts and they will sit and plan a national budget. Now, it is a hectic work to do. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of accountability and transparency for them to prepare a national budget. I'm going to explain in a, a very easy way so that you understand what usually takes place for this Ministry of Finance to come up with the national budget. So here, the Ministry of Finance, together with other members, members that have done accounts in Zambia, professionals, they will sit and plan a national budget. So what happens here, they will look at all the departments in Zambia. They will see how many people do we have in the country. They will calculate. Then they will say, what are the needs of the people? How are we going to, um, how are we going to spend this revenue that we have? So they will sit down and prepare a national budget. When that national budget is prepared, the Minister of Finance is going to take the proposal of the budget to the National Assembly. When he takes that proposal of the national budget to the National Assembly, there he will read out the whole proposal of the national budget. When he has presented that proposal to the national budget, the other members, remember, the Minister of Finance is composed of few members. So when the minister takes that prepared budget in the National Assembly, in the National Assembly, there are a lot of people there. A National Assembly, since it is made up of 150 MPs, they will be there to look at the national budget. They will sit down and analyze, criticize it. After they look into all the things that have been presented to them, 
through the Minister of Finance. It's now up to them to decide to see to it if the budget is well presented, if it is well planned, and it is going to benefit every citizen, then they'll say this budget is correctly done. Once it is presented by the Minister of Finance, the whole house now will have all the, all, all the rights now to look at it and approve. If it is not well done, they'll advise the Minister of Finance to say, you can go back as a ministry to look at it again. Once the National Assembly has done its work, they are going to get that proposal of the national budget so that the president can have the last or final authority to it by signing to the national budget. If the, pres the president has not signed to approve the national budget, it cannot be used in the nation. So they have to follow the process. When it is presented by a minister in the National Assembly, other members have to look at it, then they have to approve it. Lastly, the president must give the final authority by signing to approve the whole budget of the nation. Now, when you look at this national budget in Zambia, when do we usually have a national budget presentation? The national budget in Zambia, it is prepared by the Minister of Finance uh, in October. Then the presentations are done and the approval are done through the National Assembly. From there, you find that the needs and uh, the wants of the, of the citizen, they have to be apportioned. So how do we look at the, the national budget? I said the national budget is divided into three parts. So let us discuss the three parts that makes up the national budget. We have what we call the revenue. Revenue is the money that government receives every year from various sources, such as tax. So this part, revenue, becomes the most important part that makes up the what? The national budget. Without revenue, we will never have a national budget. The other part that is found under national budget is recurrent expenditure. Recurrent expenditure is the money which government spends every year on salaries and wages of government workers and maintenance of facilities like buildings. So when you look at recurrent expenditure, since this is the money that the government spend every year on salaries and wages of government workers, imagine in Zambia how many workers how many government workers do we have? Learners, the answer will be a lot. There are a lot of government workers. So for the government to make this national budget, they have to plan. For example, I'll take the Ministry of Education. Under the Ministry of Education, there are teachers. So the national budget and through the Minister of Finance, these people will sit and say, how many teachers do we have in Zambia? That becomes very difficult for them to come up with a figure. So what do they do? They will go province by province. They have, in Zambia, we have 10 provinces. So if we say copper belt, in the copper belt, we also have uh, districts. Then we'll say Ketwa district. How many teachers are in Ketwa district? Kalulushi district. Chingola, Chililabombwe. From there, then they'll come up with the total number of teachers that are found in the copper belt. Then they'll make it that total. They'll go to the other province until all the 10 provinces are done. After they have done that, then they'll say, if we have 
Let's say, for example, if we have 10,000 teachers, then they'll say one teacher has to be paid from January up to December. How much uh, is a teacher going to get from January to December? Then they'll calculate. From that total, then they'll say 10,000 teachers times the total amount of one teacher that the teacher is supposed to get in a month. Then it will be easy for them to plan for salaries for the teachers from January to December. If they don't plan well, that's why you see sometimes teachers will go on a strike, other workers will go on a strike. So the national budget is very, very important because they have to plan in advance. They have to plan for the salaries and wages of workers. I'm not saying only teachers. I was just giving an example. So from here you, you find that you go even to these other uh, civil servants, uh, health ministry, they are their nurses and doctors. They have to plan for each nurse, how much each nurse is going to get from January to December. We have a judiciary where they are lawyers. The government has to plan for their salaries. So when we say the current expenditure, the government has to plan salaries, wages for their civil servants. So it should be included on the national budget. I'm sure the current expenditure is clear. Very good. Let's look at the last part of national budget, which is called capital expenditure. Capital expenditure is the money which is spent on new projects. Capital expenditure is the money which is spent on new projects. For example, building of hospitals, building of schools, constructing of new roads, to mention just the few. But all the projects that are done in the country, they have to be planned for. It's not a miracle, learners. When you see a new school is built in your area, it means under national budgets, through what we call capital expenditure, the government had to plan to build that new school that you have seen near your home. When we see new hospitals, new clinics are built, it means under national budget, that part had been done. They have planned for that new hospital, new clinic. So the government makes sure that they plan before they spend. Constructing of roads. You've seen the country doing a lot of activities. For example, here in the Copper Belt, they are, they, are, they are constructing roads from Chingora somewhere to Ndola. Those roads are going to benefit every citizen. So you find that all the projects that are done by the government, they are planned before they do those activities. I'm sure you can also give me other things under capital expenditure, things that the governments are doing, especially in your areas. Can you think of those things that the government is doing for you and appreciate the effort that is done for the nation? Very good. Uh, I'm going to show you an example of a national budget. A national budget is made in a way like uh, a scale. A scale is supposed to balance. So here I've got three examples of a national budget. Then out of these three, we are going to see which one is the best national budget. Surplus budget. When we say surplus budget, remember under national budget, we said it is made up of two things. Lenas, do you still remember the two things that makes up a national budget? Very good you can still remember the two. That is income or revenue and expenditure. So when you look at a surplus budget, a surplus budget, this is a situation where income is more than 
expenditure. When you look at this scale, here where there is income, it is slightly uh, getting down or it's heavy here, meaning we have more money than what we have used. So this type of a budget is what we call a surplus budget. A surplus budget is a very good budget for the nation. Look at this other one, which is a deficit budget. Here, income. You find that there is income and expenditure. Where expenditure is, you find that the scale, it has really gone down. It means that the government here has spent a lot more than what they have. So when you say a deficit budget, under a deficit budget, this is not a very good budget for the nation. If you have a budget with a deficit, it means the income or the revenue, the money that the government has received, and the things that they have bought, it shows that they have bought more things than the money which they have. So this example of a budget is a very bad example to the nation. We should not have a budget deficit. The other example of a national budget is a balanced budget. When you look at a balanced budget, the two are balancing. We have the income and expenditure. Remember, where there is income, you can also say revenue. It's very correct. So the revenue that the government has received and the expenditure that we have are equal. They are balancing, meaning the government has planned within the amount of money that they have received. So out of these three types of budgets, which one do you think is the best budget for our country? Very good, Changwe. A surplus budget is the best budget for the nation. If we fail to have a surplus budget, we can still plan for a balanced budget. It is still correct, Mwansa. To have a balanced budget is also fine for the nation. Now, I'm going to explain these three types of budget so that you can understand these terms clearly. Look at a budget surplus. A budget surplus or a surplus budget. This should not confuse you. When you say budget surplus or if we say sup a surplus budget, this is a situation when income is more than expenditure. The money that the country has received, it is more than the things that you need to buy in the nation. That's why I said a surplus budget is good for the nation. A budget deficit. This is an example of a budget deficit. A budget deficit, learners, is not a good signal for the nation. When we have a budget deficit, we are saying this is when expenditure is more than revenue. When expenditure is more than revenue, it means we're going to buy more things, but we don't have enough money. So if people are buying a lot of things, but their income is not enough, what does it mean? You are very right, John. It means they had to borrow money from somewhere in order for them to have a budget deficit. So when we say budget deficit is when expenditure is more than revenue, it, this, is, this type of a budget, it leads into borrowing. Now, a country like Zambia, 
if they have made a budget with a deficit, where do you think they can borrow money from? Yes, you can try. Try. Very good. They can borrow money from World Bank, International Monetary Fund, even from donor communities. Now, what happens under donor communities? Donor communities are rich countries. Those rich countries, what they do, when they see a country with budgetary problems, if you have a problem in budgeting, the donor communities, they come in and then they can even give you grants. Grants, that is when you, they will give you money without even paying it back. A grant is like a gift. They will give it to you for free. So if a country like Zambia has problems when making a budget and they make a budget with a budget deficit, they will, they, will, they will sometimes receive grants from donor communities. Examples of donor community countries, we have countries like the rich countries like France, USA, Germany. In short, those rich countries, they are the ones which qualify to be called as donor communities. When um, these other organizations like uh, International Monetary Fund, if you have a budget deficit, it means you have a problem. If you go to them, then they don't usually give money for free. They don't give grants. Instead, they'll give you money in form of loans. And when you get a loan, you must pay back. You have to agree on certain terms and conditions. So if World Bank gives us uh, if World Bank gives uh, us a loan as a nation, we must be able to pay back that loan at a certain agreed period. If International Monetary Fund gives us a loan and we have problems as we make a budget, we must also be able to pay back that loan. Now, a situation where you borrow money as a nation, you have a problem in budgeting, you have a budget deficit in short, then you fail to pay back that money. That is to when it leads to what we call debt crisis. We are learning a new term here, which is called a debt crisis. Now, what is debt crisis? Debt crisis is a situation when a nation fails to pay back its debt to other countries. If Zambia has made a budget deficit and we have got money from World Bank, we've got, we've got money from International Monetary Fund, and we have agreed that we are supposed to pay back this money at a certain period of time, and we fail to pay back, then as a nation, we will fall into what we call debt crisis. Debt crisis is a very bad signal for the nation. That's why we are saying every time when the Minister of Finance, together with other members, when they sit down to prepare a national budget, they should never, ever plan for a budget deficit. Hence, we should always look forward to see what we call a balanced budget. A balanced budget, this is when the income and the expenditure are equal. So every time we prepare a national budget, the nation should aim at preparing a balanced budget. I'm sure, learners, these are three examples of national budgets are very, very clear. Learners, do you think budgeting is necessary in Zambia? Yes, it is very, very necessary. So I'm going to explain the importance of budgeting in Zambia or the importance of having a national budget in Zambia. Budgeting, the importance of budgeting. It is important to plan before spending due to the following reasons. We should do plan before we spend the money that we have. 
it is also important for the nation to plan before they spend. Some of the reasons why it is important to plan. One, it helps the government to control expenditure. It helps the government to control expenditure. When they sit down and plan, it is very easy now to see where money will be taken and how the money is going to be used. So it is important to plan as a nation. Then the government sets apart some funds to increase employment opportunities for the citizens. The government sets apart some funds to increase employment opportunities for the citizens. When they plan, it becomes easy for them to plan. For example, if there are people who are supposed to be employed, without making a budget, they may not know how many people are going to be employed in the government. So you find that it is important for them to plan and it will be easy for them to allocate some funds for the new deployed workers in the nation. It is also important because it helps to find out those sectors that have been bringing in more revenue and increase on funding them. So when you look at the planning that the government does, they'll see which parts, which areas in the country are bringing more revenue. So from there, if they'll see, they see a certain factor is bringing more money in the nation, they should fund it more so that more money can come in the nation and preparing a national budget becomes very easy. It is also important to, to prepare or to plan before spending so that it can help the government to compare its performance. Without making a national budget, without comparing what they did some other years, you find that it will be very difficult for them to see whether a country is developing or not. So through planning, we are able to see if a country is developing economically or if a country is not doing fine. So you find that in preparing national budgets, even other citizens, they will have access to accountability and to transparency because they will be able to see the outcome of the national budget. Everyone will see how money is going to be used in the nation. So that's why we are saying planning is important. We should always plan before we spend. Even if we are planning for, for your home, whatever you are trying to do, let's learn to learn from the national budget, which always plan. So we should always plan before we spend. Even when you are given little amount of money as learners, you should do plan because planning is very, very important. Is it clear, everyone? Very good. So from here we are saying, today we have looked at the national budget. Under national budget, we have defined the national budget. We have also discussed on the three main composition of a national budget. We said national budget is made up of three things, revenue, recurrent expenditure, and capital expenditure. I've also given you an example of a national budget where we said it is better for the nation to prepare a budget with a surplus or a balanced budget. Then we have also discussed on the importance of budgeting. We should always plan as a nation so that we don't end up into what we call dirty crisis. Oh, well, learners, we can now do an activity. There are only a few questions from what we have discussed. Question one, what is a national budget? Question one, what is a national budget? Question two, which minister presents the national budget in the National Assembly? Question two, which minister presents the national budget in the National 
assembly. Question three, why is budgeting important? Why is budgeting important? We can do those. Well, I'm sure we have managed to answer the three questions. Question one, what is the national budget? The answer is, it is a government plan on how to raise and spend money. What is the national budget? The answer is, national budget is a government plan on how to raise and spend money. Question two. Which minister presents budgets in the National Assembly? The answer is the Minister of Finance. The answer is the Minister of Finance. Question three, why is the budget important? Here there are a lot of answers that you can give out. For example, you say it helps the government to control expenditure. It's correct. The government sets apart some funds to increase employment opportunities for the citizens. It is also correct. It helps to find out those sectors that have been bringing out more revenue and increase on funding them. That one is also very correct. The other one, it helps the government to compare its performance. That is also correct. I'm sure you got those three questions correctly, which is very, very good. Well, learners, we have come to the end of the lesson presentation. From me, Unsanje Mwaka, and the entire crew, bye.